seven. And what a, a spectacular, exciting halftime show uh, with the homecoming festivities. We'll have to get the name of the winning uh, homecoming king and homecoming queen. We'll have to get that before our telecast is over for the evening. But I was down in, uh, uh, down at the snack bar area at halftime. I saw a lot of my former players at Norristown. It's always great to see them get a big hug. Of course, they all want me to give them some some uh, uh, some of their uh, props, as they say here in the uh, in the booth. But I told them that I've, I've given them plenty of props over their careers. Right. So right now, J uh, Jason Fazari kicking off to the Quakertown Panthers, and the second half is now underway. Relatively short, kick, out, of bounds. out of bounds. There's going to be a penalty. penalty. So uh, it looks like Quakertown is going to take over first and 10, I believe, at their own 35-yard line. Good field position. Which is excellent field position, and it's a break they needed. Now, Norristown High, Joe, was late coming out uh, following the festivities. Quakertown was on the field, completed their pre-second half uh, stretching. We were on the sidelines a good five to eight minutes before Norristown even came out in the field. And I, we even thought there might be a penalty assessed. Yep. <coughs> But first and 10, 35, let's see if there's any new wrinkles in the offense scheme of the Panthers. Norristown comes out, uh, comes out in a, 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 a five-man defensive line, four linebackers, two safeties. <laughs> Quarterback Chris. Well, the first half belonged to Norristown, and it was Jason Thompson's finest hour. No question about it. And they may even have to make a couple more big plays to hold off Quakertown. Yeah, Quakertown isn't going to go away. It's a class program. There's a keeper. Yeah, the quarterback keeper. We haven't seen many of that. Uh, choice of play by Chris Lemuel. Interesting start. Fake the, fake, fake the Weibel, Lemuel kept the ball. Picked up good four yards, second and second and six for uh, the Panthers. Here comes. Interesting, Lemuel goes to the sidelines between plays. That's gotta be, that's, 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 that's gotta be taxing. Well, if you notice, after if you notice uh, Ryan Blake does the same exact thing. <laughs> You're right. Coach Grove, is, uh, that's been his, uh, format for getting plays in as long as I've watched them coach. Uh, There's a quick hitter. Uh, Weibel didn't get any any yardage whatsoever. Maybe a maybe yard. A yard, you're yeah. right. It's going to bring up a interesting again. First third down. <coughs> critical third down play, uh, Joe, right now. I think they'll go to Wimmer, number two. Flanked out to the right. That's the wide side of the field. And that's Gaffney inside him. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Yep, they went to Wimmer. And Wimmer's open, and he's going to go, it looks like. Nope, caught from behind by number 22, James Jacobs. And Jacobs might have been the only the only player that could have caught him for Norristown. Now, Joe, what's interesting is your expertise. You called that play, and lo and behold, he was wide open. And they've run that pattern so much I was a, we're, you, know, you would think there might have been some adjustment at halftime but yeah. let's give credit to the execution of uh, absolutely Town. the deep slant here's the handoff inside handoff I believe that was tw that might have been 28 yes that would be Steve, Steve Kratz. Kratz he's listed as a tight end linebacker he had him in the backfield that time well he's, he's I have him as a running back uh, did when I okay. interviewed the coach yesterday, he told me he'd be a starting running back. Right. Ball at the 24-yard line and right down the field to start the second half. All right, you got you have uh, Gaffney flank to the to the left, Wimmer to the right, single set back. Uh, once again, an incomplete pass. They seem to be married to that play, and it just doesn't work. Well, it's always open, though. It's yeah. wide open. But the quarterback has to get the ball to the, that, to, to that the flanker. Aware, that yeah. I'm aware of. Yeah. But, but the alarm in my voice is, why is it always open? Yeah. You would think somebody would anticipate that. 
and and maybe play a little bit of uh, a possum on the play and sneak in sneak there in and, and catch the ball. pick it up because if you pick that off there's no one there's, no. It's, it's history touchdown but by allowing him to have so much ground they're going to keep going to the well because they have that much confidence that Gaffney if he catches it can beat one man third and nine big play Boy, there's a play we haven't seen and who did that go to? Weibel. Did that go to Weibel? Yep. Weibel on a swing pass. I think they might they might be close to they, they're close to a first down and it is a first down I believe yet they're moving the uh, they're moving oh, yeah. the sticks. It's, in, it's inside the 15 sure. And uh, I'm really impressed Joe with the uh, uh, multiple offensive formations and plays and diversity yeah. of this this uh, Quaker Town offense, and very impressive. An extremely sophisticated offense for a, for a high school program, absolutely. All right, they're yelling illegal substitution up here, but apparently the officials on the field do not concur with Mr. Skeet Miller. Like many of the coaches, relationship with Skeet over the years. Well, Joe, uh, got picked up three the yards. They got three, picked up three yards on that play. And this is Weibel territory down here. Yeah. I expect him to, to get the ball till he pounds it in. Right. Two set in the backfield. Quick pitch, pitch Weibel. Weibel. Once again, Norris down susceptible around the end, and he's in. Touchdown, Quakertown, Joe. Yep. And they just went through Norristown like a hot knife went through butter on that drive. They went 65 yards in only three minutes. 18 and seconds. 18, 18 seconds. Yep. Very impressive drive coming out to start the second half. Well, I, uh, you know, I think we both knew, Tom, that Quakertown wasn't going to go away. Too strong a program. Oh, absolutely. Too many good athletes. Now here's a penalty. I don't know that that came in the defensive backfield. And if it's against Norristown, let's see. An illegal substitution this time against Norristown. And that's going to put the ball at the one and a half. Joe, do you think the luck to run it in? No, no, they'll kick it. I think they'll kick it. Well, Wim Wimmer's almost automatic here, and, 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 and you don't want to take that one point away, especially in a 14-13 game. If it's a minute to play, then you might go for two. Well, see, I figured a minute to go, you, you go for the short one, to tie it and take it to overtime. Here, you might want to try to surprise Norristown and uh, put, them, put them in a the hole. Kick is up and well through the uprights. 14-14. With 8.42 remaining, Quakertown on a very impressive drive with uh, Weibel uh, gaining most of the yardage. A very important slant pass to uh, uh, Wimmer on a third and nine. Yeah, that's the play you call, Joe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you hear us talk about critical plays and big plays and you probably say, oh, there they go with the big play. But in a game of this magnitude, with so much at stake, mm. championship and playoff implications, yeah. those plays. Now, the, the big play there was the one that, that uh, Joe Highland just alluded to when he called uh, the inside slant to number two, Wimmer. And uh, that proved to keep the drive going. If he doesn't succeed in that play, they're punting and Norristown has the ball. That's correct. That allowed them to retain possession of the ball. All right, let's see if the Eagles can regroup and come back here. <coughs> Brad Baker and uh, James Jacobs back deep for the Eagles. A contrast in scoring styles. Uh, Joe Norristown has scored on two big plays, one defensively, one offensively. They haven't had a sustained drive all night. Good point. And Quakertown, on the other hand, has sustained a drive of 65 and uh, prior to that, a drive of 89 yards. Nice kickoff, nice kickoff. It's gonna go to Baker once again. 
Takes it about the goal line. Not much with Baker on the return, maybe to the 19 or 20. All right, let's see if the Eagles can get something going here. A nice, long, sustained drive. Eat up some clock. They haven't had any uh, continuity on offense because they haven't had the ball, Joe. I don't think they've had two consecutive first downs, Tom. We don't, uh, we don't have the benefit of a, a stat sheet here in the booth, but I, I can't recall them putting together two, uh, two first downs. That's a good point, and now that you mention that, I have no recollection of that either. Okay, here comes uh, Jake Williams, <coughs> wide right, backs in an eye, Thompson and James Jacobs. Blake on the handoff straight ahead. Couldn't see if it was Jacobs or Thompson, Jason Thompson on the carry. In on the tackle is Nick Gross again. Uh, pick up of three, three or maybe, maybe four on the play. Yeah. Second and six. Quaker Town with three down linemen. Interesting defense. Gross and Gaffney, the outside linebackers. Penalty flag on the play. They got Norristown again on a legal procedure. What they did, they shifted laterally uh, left to right their defensive line, and Norristown just did not have the self-discipline and patience right. to stay set. And what's, yeah, it's just like their last time they had the ball, Joe. Yeah. They had a four, three or four yard gain, a penalty, and now they're in a hole, second 11. Yeah. Remember last time Blake got sacked? They are fortunate to get out of that because they right stole the, the ball. Right, the sack by Weingartner, yeah. that's right. All right, let's see what Coach Grove's gonna do here, Baxson and I. Blake hasn't gotten very good protection in the passing game tonight. And there's a little nice pass play. The flag nice play. There's Thompson ball. again. Good block and a very nice executed play over the 40 yard line. Thompson running like a man possessed on that who, on that swing pass. Who threw that block though? That was a that was a horrific, tremendous that was tremendously hard block. Thompson bowled over one of his assistant coaches. Looks like he came up a little lame on that play. Nice looks, like a, looks like he has a bit of a cramp, Who's nothing that? serious. Jason Thompson walking it off on the sidelines here. Helmet off, being looked at by the trainer and by the coach. He's a tough kid, he'll be back. High formation, handoff. James Jacobs just can't break the seam tonight. He just, yeah. he seems like he's just one step slow to break that, or one cut. And if he ever does, he's going to be off to the races. Number 57, Danny Pasternak on the tackle. Joe, I think, I, think and Norris, I think Norristown's going to need Jacobs to break one in order to win this game. Yeah. I really do. Because they just don't seem to have uh, the type of offense to sustain drives. They're going to, of course, let's see. Let's see. Maybe they'll prove me wrong. I hope they do. Blake on a roll out left. He, nice pass. That's Jake Williams open. Uh, that could be a late hit. That could be a late hit. But the officials very rarely call those against Nar or call those in Narsdown's favor. I've historically over the years. But that that was definitely a late hit, no question. He was on the ground, the whistle blown and bang. And it wasn't a soft late hit. No. But again, we do not have the uh, technological uh, capacity to show the viewers replays here. I was impressed by uh, Blake but, rolling to his left, throwing against his body. A beautiful spiral, beautiful pass, well-conceived play. No time there. Blake can't get away. He's smothered by four, at least four Quaker Town Norristown's blocking scheme, players. Joe's just not getting it done. Right. Simple as that. Right. But I, I recommend the fans, the true football fans that are watching these uh, telecasts whenever they're shown and, and you have an idea when they're coming on, 
uh, get the VCR in there and tape. That way, if you want to replay it later on, you'll have that replayability. Plus, you'll have the immortal words of McGee and Highland to uh, memorialize. Right, and I also recommend the officials have the ability to watch. That's they correct. The same That's right. To review their their decisions. Okay, Blake back again. That time he no, gets a nice five pass. wide open drop. You can't drop those no. wide open. No. There wasn't a soul around him, no. and he dropped it. I don't know right. why the coaching staff would uh, right. question that. Yeah. Brad Baker's got to make that call. And I've said, make that I've catch. said these sorry. receivers for Norristown have good hands. They, it, to win championships, plays like that have to be made. There's no two ways about it. All right, it's third and 14, big play. It seemed like he, he thought he was going to get hit, but there was no one within seven yards. No. And Blake has not had as much time uh, now I wonder consistently. If, I wonder if... Uh, Quaker Town's going to send its linebackers. I, I would. I would. I think they will. I think they will. I think they're coming. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, that Number was two. Under yep. They're Jake. Just, Jake Williams tried to reverse himself, spun his wheels. Ball fell about about a yard short. It didn't look like that ball was tipped or his arm was hit. No, did I, it? I don't think so. No, no. He so was. So you're straight. looking at just two plays where they didn't execute. All right, it's fourth and 14. All right, coach draws these plays up on the board, and the players have to execute them. The coach can't go out there and catch a ball. He can't go out there and throw a pass. He has to put his players in a position to succeed. They have to execute in order to get that done. All right, Wimmer, uh, Wimmer and uh, Nick Gross back in deep punt formation. Good snap. Average kick. Well, I. I would say another poor less than punt. average kick, right? Left than average kicking kick. game. Uh, they're being out. Their their kicking game is 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 in favor of Quaker Town, and the execution of offense has been in favor of Quaker Town. Norristown, Joe. This is a very very important defensive sequence. Yeah. Under five minutes to go in the third, they have to they have to show they can stop this Quaker Town yes. team. Yes. Yes. They really haven't done it the last two possessions. I think conditioning is going to come into play because uh, the the key players for Quaker Town uh, are going both ways. Well, that's that's the huh? same for Norristown. Norristown. If you look at your thing, yeah. yeah. I think Norris. I think Quaker Town has four players come off the field. Norristown maybe two or three, and uh, they're just pounding them. Now they're going. This half they seem to be looking to other backs. That was number. That was number 28. 28. That's Kratz. Yeah, Steve Kratz. Steve Kratz. All right, ball on the 35 yard line, second and five. Back split, handoff to the up back. They stop Weibel. Weibel. Big play. That Big defensive play by number 19. There's that young man again, Jamal Blackwell. And Joe's again, third down. Very crucial third down. Norris down needs to stop a drive. And right now, Quaker Town has Norris down right where they want it. Yep. Third and five with a pass run option available. They, they've got to take that slant pass away. They've got to watch the back out of the backfield. Certainly have to watch Gaffney. It's going to be basically a straight drop. Oh, and number seven was open. Yes, he was number seven. He, that was a beat, Steve Wimmer. Steve Wimmer beat Jake Williams over the middle. And how big is Steve Wimmer? Steve Wimmer is a uh, six foot one, 180 pound and, junior, the brother of Brian. Right, and Jake Williams, how tall is he? About four, four ten, five ten. He's not. He's not five ten. No. I'm five ten, and Jake comes up to my chin. So there's a definite size yeah. advantage. Here's Ryan Walter kicking for Cheltenham. That was, well, that was a big, uh, a big uh, incompletion. That was big play by Norristown. That was a big punt, and it should be fielded by Baker. Fair catch. Boy, he looked shaky. Yeah, he looked shaky, but he he held on to it. He held on to it. 
Three and a half minutes left to go in the third period. The score is 14-14. And Joe, I look out, it's near capacity on the Norris down side. You're absolutely I mean, right. If you look down at the track, if the camera could get the track, if you could get the track down there, uh, you could see all the people milling around and three quarters of the seats are filled up here in the in this uh, home side. That's correct. It's it's a great a great homecoming crowd for Norristown. And it looks like some people trickled in finally from from uh, from Quakertown because even the far sideline is is, is uh, looking populated. Right. It looks like is that Jacobs? Yeah. No, it wasn't Jacobs. Thompson. That was Jason Jay Thompson. Thompson. It's good to see Jason back in there. He got nicked on that on that run. They worked on him a little bit, sent him back in. Not surprising. He's a warrior. It's going to take more than a cramp to knock that boy out of the game. Oh, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, uh, there's kids playing down the other end. And, you know, with all security and police here tonight, you wonder why they let that go. It's a distraction to the players. And they were just given directions by the PA, uh, Phil Giovinco, to vacate that area and return to the bleachers. And that was uh, that was nearly intercepted. That I don't know who that was intended. There was no receiver within 10 yards of that, 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 that pass, huh? That's right. Misdirection, mix up on the routes. Third and nine here. There's Coach Grove just sent the play in with quarterback Ryan Blake. Third and nine, another big play, Tom. Is, well, they, you know, they've had some receivers open, so they have some good plays, mm -hmm. in, you know, in their package. Mm -hmm. They have to execute. But mainly what they have to do is they have to give Blake time to pass. Okay, one back set. Trips wide. Evident passing situation. Blake to Brad Baker, but I think he's going to come up short of the first down. Yeah, he did not make it. And he didn't get a great spot from the official. He's slow getting up. Slow getting up. He wasn't hit that hard. But he might have caught a cleat in the, in the turf. Boy, Fazari needs a good punt here, Joe. Why are those kids allowed to play down there? Why, why isn't anybody telling them to get in the bleachers? Okay, Brad Baker, it seems he's still down. Is that right, Joe? I think I think that's who it is, Tom. I can't see from here. I think it is uh, young Baker. Uh, I hope he's all right. Uh, he's sitting up. They rely on him again. All right, he's getting up. It is Brad Baker. And he's walking a little gingerly. Ankles. But I think he'll be all right. I hope it's cramps and not a, not a joint injury yeah, like right, an ankle. Right. Cramps they could rub out. Right. They can return to action. We'll try to bring you an update on uh, on the young Baker's condition. But he looks he seems to be all right. They're measuring now. I know it's going to be a little bit short. Oh, Joe, it, it, it's maybe six inches. That's right. And this is going to tempt Coach Grove. I can tell you that right now. Let's see what he does. No matter what he does, I, I don't think he can make a bad decision. No, that's here. correct. I don't think no, he can he's, make he's the one making the decision. It's very easy for us up here, that's for sure. Very easy. I think he's going to go for it, Tom. Well, I think I, he's is, going for it. Where's number 17? Is he on the field or is he on the side? I, I saw him go into the huddle right after the last play. Fazari, that means, uh, I mean, I didn't see him come out. I don't see him on the sidelines. But 
Yeah, they're going to go for it, Tom. Right, they're, they're, they're going for got it. Got to hand it to, to, to Grove. Well, the game could ride on this decision either way. Quarterback sneak, I hope. I, I think he needed a, He got it. Look where the official is. Yeah, yeah. He got it yep. easily. If where the uh, near official is standing and marking with his feet together, yeah. he only needed four or five inches. That's right. He could have f fallen forward and got it. Nice play by Blake. And gutsy a, call by Grove. Very gutsy call. And again, no matter what Coach Grove called there, I would have been in agreement with. I give him credit. You, you want to win. You're home. You want to win. Sure. Two but minutes left to play in the third period. They have to parlay that decision, though, into uh, sustaining this drive and, and putting some points on the board. There's that shift, that defensive shift. There's Thompson. Oh, uh, Thompson block. is rambling tonight. <laughs> now, Jacobs isn't carrying nearly as much this half. And I, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised it's because of the injury. He did sustain an injury last week. He's been fighting cramp muscles all season. Last week, I, I believe he sustained uh, an ankle injury. Also, when he, was, when he was hit out of bounds, hit what, why he was out of bounds. Also, Tom, I think that uh, Coach Grove uh, sees that uh, Thompson uh, has the hot hand. This is the best I've ever seen him play yeah. tonight. Or the hot feet. Well, he caught the ball, so he had good hot hands. Too. That's right. There he goes. There, that's Jacobs. As I mentioned at the start of this half, I think it, I, I think in order for Norris to win the game, I think James is going to have to break one. You know, I'm not saying for 80 or 90 yards. Uh, Even if he breaks one for a 15-yard mm -hmm. score, I mean, he's yeah. got to break one to get into the end zone. All right, Norristown has put together three consecutive first downs. Right, and we're inside the 42nd mark uh, of the third period here. This game is flying by. Remarkably well played. There's a quick play. That time they have it snuffed out. Nikki that Gross time. again, right on the spot. Yeah, they, they adjusted yeah. that time. Well, that actually was Jacobs on the flank, not um, not Jason right. Thompson. <clears throat> Second and ten. It's not going to. I don't think they're going to get another playoff uh, this period. Now they're going to let it run down. That's the end of the third quarter, Joe. We're tied at 14 here at Roosevelt Field on a beautiful Friday night, October 5th. And uh, homecoming night, festivities. And we got a heck of a ball game. This game has been everything that I thought it was going to be, everything that the newspapers thought it was going to be. Uh, both teams realize that uh, it has playoff implications, postseason implications, championship implications. Uh, both, uh, both teams are, again, well coached. You have Warriors on both sides of the ball both offensive and defensive units. And uh, uh, again, this, this, is, this is a nice way to spend a, 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 a Friday evening. It is, uh, it's very, very entertaining. You made comments earlier, whether it was the first half or second half, about how important it is that Norristown has to either beat Quakertown or Downingtown to ensure them getting another playoff berth for the fourth consecutive year. Yes. But they have an upper Murrayan team on their schedule who many consider to be one of the best, if not the best, in all suburban one. Right. Uh, Upper Marine did lose to Cheltenham, but uh, they're playing really good football. I see there's Nick Rotunda's here tonight scouting. Uh, he's a Norristown employee, scouts for uh, coaches for uh, Upper Marine and coach uh, Andy Toto. And uh, Plymouth Whitemarsh won their first game last week. Joe Iacovetti has a, uh, a young squad. And they, of course, they're a Thanksgiving date. So that game probably won't play into the playoff patients, but Norristown can't look past anyone. No, no. 